My friends list of sleepover rules are beyond bizarre. I've never been good at making friends or any type and bond with people in general. I'm not even close to most of my family members like I'm close to Jessie. Jessie is my best friend. I've known her only for a year and a half but she's literally my world. She's the only person I can speak to, the only person who understands me. I've never slept over at anyone's house that isn't mine, and even when I'm supposed to be staying at a family member's house I get anxious and they have to call my parents to collect me. This results in my parents having to cancel everything that they plan. My parents resent me, I'm a huge burden to them because of just how anxious I am. Jessie asked if I wanted to have a sleepover at her house. I'd never been to her house, or anyone for that matter, and I'll admit I was ecstatic, but also hesitant, in case I got anxious and ruined the sleepover and my friendship, I knew I was probably overthinking but it still scared me. Jessie gave me some time to think, and I agreed. I told my parents and they were pretty shocked, but decided to let me go because I had an actual shot at making a best friend for life. The car pulled up onto a large driveway, connected to an even larger house. It was huge, like mansion-sized, probably the biggest house I'd ever laid eyes on. Me and my parents made our way over to the front door, which was about twice my dad's size, and he was 67. There was no doorbell, instead there was an abnormally large silver knocker in the middle of the door. I knocked. Jessie answered the door. When she saw me her face seemed to light up and her smile grew larger. She instantly leaned in for a hug. Jess's mother and father also approached the door and stood behind Jessie, also with a comforting smile on their face. Jess's father was also tall like my own dad, he was your typical dad looking person. It was the same with her mother too, it was almost surreal. Jessie toured me around her huge house, which took about an hour in itself. Then we ventured off into Jess's bedroom, which was huge and pink. Very pink, like every object was pink. After staying in Jess's room playing games and eating candy for a while, her mother walked into the room and placed a sheet of a four paper on Jess's bed. The way she walked was so elegant and graceful, like a ballerina. I took up my headphones and grabbed the sheet of paper. It read, Sleepover Rules. Follow these rules to ensure you have a safe and happy sleepover. 1. Don't eat too much candy. They can smell it from miles away. 2. Do not leave the bedroom after 1.45 a.m. Please remember this rule, your life depends on it. 3. If you happen to wake up during the night for no apparent reason, hide under the bed within 25 seconds, that way they cannot see you. 4. Do not get snacks from the mini fridge during 8.56 p.m. and 9.47 p.m., you will not like what you find. 5. Make sure to turn off any light source apart from the TV, you must keep this on all through the night. I can't emphasize how important this is. 6. If you wake up randomly and see Jessie sitting upright, awake in her bed, run. Lock yourself in the end suite and do not come out for the rest of the night. If Jessie knocks and says she hurt herself and needs help, ignore her and do not reply. 7. If you wake up and hear the baby crying, ignore it completely, don't even move, it isn't the baby. 8. Do not attempt to speak to Jessie during the night, and if she speaks to you do not reply. This is crucial if you want to stay safe. 9. If you hear a dog whimpering and scratching on the bedroom door, drag Jessie under the bed and then hide behind the bookshelf. We do not own a dog. 10. If you hear a ringing in your ear, run, leave the house, this is the only exception, if you don't, we all die. Have a lovely sleep over Tina. It had to be some kind of joke, these couldn't have been real, but I still have a gut feeling that I should follow these creepy ass rules. I folded the piece of paper and placed it in my right pocket, then sat down again to play with Jessie. After about an hour, Jess's dad opened the door. It's bedtime girls, you must go to sleep, now. I suddenly got very anxious, because this is when I had to start following the creepy rules. I held back all of my emotion because I didn't want to lose a friend like Jessie. Me and Jessie both got into bed. We top and tailed so my head was at the bottom end of her bed. My Tina, sweet dreams, she said, in between yawns. I don't know how my dreams were going to be sweet after what I'd read. Surprisingly, I fell asleep pretty quick. My sleep was pretty deep, and I didn't have any nightmares like most nights. And that's when I woke up. My stomach sank. I turned to see Jessie sitting, upright, in her bed. Wide awake. I didn't want to believe that these rules were true but my instinct was to just run. I bolted into the end suite and locked the door behind me. After a solid few minutes of hyperventilating in Jess's end suite, I decided to unlock the door, I thought it was all probably stupid anyway. Just before my hand reached the lock, someone knocked on the door. I froze. Tina help me. I've hurt my head and my vision's going blurry. I desperately wanted to open the door, but something in my head advised me against it. Jessie kept screaming for help. I slumped into the corner, shaking with every breath I took. She was screaming for hours. It was unbearable. Her voice got less human-like and more distorted with every screech. By the time she stopped, I was already half asleep, to put into perspective just how long her screaming went on for. I woke up. The light from the sun outside made my eyes sting. My ears were still throbbing. I slowly got up from the corner of the bathroom and unlocked the door. Jessie was playing on her PS5. Everything was totally normal. Hey Tina, she said, in her usual jaunty tone. I think your mom and dad are already outside waiting for you in their car. I couldn't take speaking, everywhere in my body ached. I picked up my stuff and started walking downstairs. Jess's parents waited at the bottom of the stairs to greet me. Your parents are outside waiting for you Tina, said her mother with a smile. How did they get here so quickly? It was only quarter to nine. I could see the open door and my parents' car outside. 
I was so relieved, I was gonna leave this place finally. Jess's dad showed me out, and I hopped into my parents' car. I can't begin to explain how relieved I was to see my parents' smiling faces again. Jesse and her family waved at me as I drove away. How was the sleepover sweetie? Asked my dad. My phone buzzed. It was a message from my mom. It said, Hey Tina, I was just messaging to ask what time you wanted me and your dad to pick you up from Jess's house. I looked back up at my mom, who was driving, and then to my dad, who was smiling eerily at me. Shit, I forgot to leave on the TV. I felt sick to my stomach. Forgot something. Asked my dad. 